the Sony ZV-1 was just announced, and in this video, you're going to see a YouTuber that wasn't cool enough to get a demo version of that camera talk about the camera anyway because he loves Sony cameras. If you're new here, my name's Javier Mercedes. I like covering video tech tutorials and gear reviews. If that suits you, hit the subscribe button, and let's dive right into it. Let me just tell you the very first thing that I don't think many people are talking about with this camera, and I saw it on Think Media's video, is the record limit. People have not been talking about how this camera camera does not have a record limit. And if you look at the specs on BNH, it says no limit on the record limit. So I'm hoping this camera has no record limit. And if it does not, that means it's probably one of the cheapest prosumer, however you want to label it, cameras that can record with no limit. And for me as a video podcaster, this is a complete game changer. Just the idea of having no record limit at that price point of $750, I believe, with the whole pre-sale thing may be worth it just to begin with. I think one of the biggest gripes of using a cell phone versus a dedicated video camera is that with the iPhone, you can't just remove your SD card to offload your footage. So if you were recording for something like a whole hour or two hour long podcast, it's a little bit more troublesome to get that footage off of your phone to your computer versus taking an SD card out of a camera and putting that straight into your computer. One feature I haven't seen anyone talk about yet, but on the spec sheet in Sony's website, it is there, is the fact that it can record proxies internally on the camera. If you don't know what proxies are, they're basically smaller resolution files of really, really big files. So if you're shooting in a resolution like 4K, it's going to simultaneously record a 720p file of that. So when you're editing those 4K files on your computer, it will actually put that 720p as a stand-in or a substitute file so your editing process can go so much smoother as opposed to editing with 4K footage. Now when you export, it's still going to reference those 4K full resolution files. If you want to learn about the whole proxy workflow with Sony cameras and how they interact with Premiere Pro, I have a whole video about that. I'll put it on the screen right now. It does have the face softening technology in there, which I think may be a gimmick, but I can tell you from personal experience as being a videographer, when you're filming models, a lot of them will say, oh, hey, hey, can you just soften up my skin in post? And if you could do that in camera on quick turnaround projects, I'm all for it. The Sony ZV-1 has that defocus the background with ease feature where all you have to do is hit a button and then automatically turns the background blurry and puts you crisp in focus. I think that feature is amazing for people that just want to pick up a camera and start recording and they don't want to have to worry about what shutter speed, aperture, or ISO even mean. They can just hit the button turns the background blurry, and it just works. And even for people like me that know about camera lingo like ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, it's still nice to have a little feature to automatically achieve the lowest f-stop possible to get a blurry background. Thanks for putting that in, Sony. And also, if you've noticed how the sun is beaming across me on these little dots from the window, you could hit the like button. The next feature made me so happy to see, and I hope they implement this feature in the rest of the Sony camera line, is the fact that the Sony ZV-1 doesn't have a flip up screen from the top, it actually flips out to the side. And the reason I love that is because with something like my Sony RX100, you can't put anything on the top of that. It has a built-in flash and a finder like this. So this camera was more geared towards photographers. The ZV-1 was geared towards people for video. So instead of having a flash on top, they actually have an amazing microphone on board. And from the tests that I've heard from other YouTubers, it sounded really good. And it comes with its own little windscreen that you can put on the top for when you're vlogging outside. My Sony RX100 does not have a microphone jack in, and the ZV-1 does, and it also has that mount on top. So you could put a lavalier microphone on, or you could put something like the Rode Video Micro to get amazing sound quality as well. And it's great that the screen flips out to the side because if you were to put one of those mics on the top, it would actually block the screen if the flippy screen went up. One thing that I've noticed everybody's been talking about in their videos is the fact that it's overheating some. And with my Sony RX100, it definitely does have overheating issues. If you were trying to shoot in 4K for an extended period of time outside in hot weather, it would overheat. But with something like my Sony RX100, if it was decent temperature, 
are indoors and I was recording an hour long podcast, I never really ran into overheating issues when I was recording in HD. I'm sure they've grown leaps and bounds past the Sony RX104 in terms of combating overheating. And I've seen that there's even a standard or low or high or some other kind of parameter that you can switch in the menu to prioritize record time over overheating. And whatever that parameter is, I would definitely make sure to turn that to longer record times if that's something that you're worried about. Let me touch on the biggest drawback that everybody's been bringing up with the ZV-1, and that is the field of view and how it's at 24. My camera, the Sony RX104, does go 24 to 70, and it is f1.8. And I will say it's enough. The biggest issue that most people have, though, is if you are vlogging with a camera like this and you use active stabilization, which I highly recommend you do, it's going to crop into that image even more from the 24 millimeters. And the biggest solution I have for you here is to just get the camera further away from just arm's length. So what I mean by that is use something like a Switch Prod Pro. You could use the Bluetooth compatible recorder handle thingy that they're promoting also with the camera. And the biggest one that I use all the time with my Sony RX100 is the Dinkum Systems Action Pod Pro. If you've followed me for any decent amount of time, you know that I love this piece of gear. It's a clamp on one end and the tripod uh, thread on the other. And for something that's as small as the form factor of the Sony ZV-1, it's perfect for mounting your camera to something like a handrail, a ledge, wherever you want to put that camera, you could because the camera is light enough to do that. Now, recently, I've actually been using a combination of both. The SwitchPod is by far a more sturdier piece of gear when you're handling it and you're walking around with your camera to get the camera further away from you so you have a bigger field of vision. But you get that same extension with the Dinkum Systems Action Pod Pro. So if you do buy the Sony ZV-1 for vlogging purposes or any kind of handheld facing yourself selfie purposes, I highly recommend getting some other apparatus to extend that camera away from you so you can make the most of the field of vision that comes with the camera. The next key feature that's in most Sony RX100 line cameras is the fact that it comes with an ND filter built into the camera. And let me tell you, if you've never used an ND filter before, I remember the first time I turned on the ND filter on my Sony RX100 and I was blown away. The fact that I could keep all of the information in the sky without blowing out all the highlights and still get a cool depth of field on my face was so awesome to see. And the Sony ZV-1 does come with that built-in ND filter. Another drawback of the Sony RX100 line is these the battery life. You will burn through these so fast, especially when you're shooting something like 4K or that really high frame rate footage, which the Sony ZV-1 can go up to 960 frames per second. And if it's anything like my Sony RX104, which can also do 960 frames per second, it goes through batteries like nobody's business. The cool thing, though, is that you have a multi-in. And on the Sony ZV-1, it has that same USB-in. And you can power and charge the camera through that USB-in. So that means if you plan on recording for extended periods of time, especially for something like a podcast, definitely have some sort of option where you can use a portable USB power brick or just plug it into the wall and then you don't have to worry about running out of batteries you're just gonna have to worry about running out of SD card space and speaking of SD card space I know that Gerald Undone already pointed this out but the SD card and the battery are on the bottom right next to the tripod screw so what ends up happening is if you want to get access to either the battery or the SD card and you have a tripod plate on there you have to take everything off just to get to the SD card and battery it's not a major deal breaker but it's always nice when you can leave a rig intact and get access to your SD card or change out a battery if need be without taking off the tripod plate. One thing that's been implemented on all the Sony cameras recently is a touchscreen. It's not a full touchscreen in the sense that you can click everything in the menu, but at least you can touch focus, which is a huge game changer if you've never used that before. One other gimmicky thing that I actually think is a very cool feature is the fact that it can auto expose for your face regardless of if you're going from shadows to light. Obviously, I can't show it here unless I was to show some other person's footage, but if you've already watched those videos, then you know what I'm talking about. I think that's a really cool feature. And the last feature that I want to bring up is the whole gear focus precedence to like face or whatever it is. The thing that if you've seen any of the other reviews on the camera, if you 
hold something up to the camera. Like right now I have to hold it, hold it in the center. So it focuses it to it. And then like back to my face here, if I was on the Sony ZV one, it would actually just like focus to the piece of gear. If I held it in front of the camera correctly, I think that's really cool but I'm a little biased because I am a gear reviewer on this YouTube channel. What do you think in the comments down below? Is this the perfect camera for YouTube? I think it is pretty, pretty close, if only not for the whole field of vision thing. But again, you can combat that with holding the camera further away from you with different devices. We'll see if there's any other big issues as the camera gets released to the masses. But man, Sony, I think, has kind of hit a home run in terms of the vlog community and a entry level camera to help people just hit record and start creating content. But like I said, I would love to know what you guys think about the camera in the comments down below. Hopefully this video was enough information for you about the Sony ZV-1 without actually having the camera in hand. It would have been a lot cooler if Sony sent me one. One day, one day, man, if when I get a pre-order camera before people get their hands on it, that's when you know. That's when you know you've made it as the YouTube, the, the YouTube's tuber content creator. Until that day, I hope you guys are out there living a life of abundance. Love you. And uh, you can hit the subscribe button if you like the way that I do my videos. If not, just leave a thumbs up. All right. See you guys later.